Hello and welcome to the third part of the Bitwig Controller API tutorial programming extensions and so far and so forth. And it's great that you're still with me. And today we're going to dive into processing MIDI coming from your controller. Before we dive into that, I have a little errata from the second part. A viewer pointed out that there is a little problem in there, what I said. So also on Mac, the controller scripts and extensions are located inside of your documents folder and not like on Linux on the top. So last time we created this very simple script you might remember which I called here for my Yamaha Mox F and it does nothing so far besides just outputting three commands and before we start maybe let's clean up a little bit the script so it's a little bit more readable for example like this and as you know I prefer that formatting but that's always up to you what you like but whatever you prefer you should always decide to use only once. Okay, so what you see, there is this function print line, uh, which just outputs text on the console. And actually, this is just a shortcut for a longer version, which is just the function call on the host object. So the host object is your entry point to all the objects you can create to access Bitwig. And it has some helper functions as well. For example, it's print line function. So if you look add to that let's add that initialized let's call that such part two and i also started already bitwig here and you see if you look in the console it already restarted the script automatically because it monitors your scripts and if you do a change it automatically reloads it and you see it does exactly the same as a normal print line and it's output it here and another function which is available is if you want to output an error so let's go back to here it's not only this print line function it's also a error line function so this line by the way just means that a return is output so you start with a new line if you enter a new text so let's say something like Ooh, big error happened and if we do that it will also be restarted automatically and as you will see this text will be output too and the only difference to the other output is just that it will be printed in red so it's very dangerous okay and there is a third thing you could do there's also the function call show pop-up notification and this is something like this so you can do it like that it's also from the host and let's say simply hello world how original so now let's go back to bitwig and we didn't see that because it's hidden there so if you remember the command key in r reloaded automatically and as you see we have here let's do it again here we have now this nice message hello world so if you want to give your user any information for example you have a mode change on your controller script or anything like this you can use that function a little trick i'd like to show you is you can write new functions but not call it already so for example we can say let's say hello and move that code from up there just down there Let's just remove that. So if we now reload the script automatically, you see there's nothing happening, but we can now call this function from the command line. So let's say here, say hello, bang. This function gets called and you get this message. You can use it for, for debugging, for example, if you want to output the state of an object or try a test function, because remember, you don't have any debuggers. Okay, I promise that we'll look into MIDI as well. And before that, let's get an understanding what you can actually or what you need to do to write such an extension. There are five things to do, starting here with the extension. So you have inputs and you have outputs of your extension. You can 
don't leave out any of those errors. So you don't have to implement everything, just what you need for the implementation of your idea. So normally you have an input from any kind of device. This can be a USB controller, this can be a MIDI device, this can be a network connection, whatever. This is the input which gives you new information. And you want to send also out some control information to your device, for example, light and LED on a button or feel a display. You get also state changes from Bitwig, which means something in your project document changes. For example, the user changed the volume on the track or created a new MIDI clip or things like that. So you can get notifications about that, which you can also act then on in your extension. And you can also control Bitwig, for example, send a transport play command or create a new track or things like that. And finally, what you implement in your extension is your program logic. So how you tie all together the inputs and outputs and and what you actually do in your extension. So these are the five things you need to do. And as I said before, you can leave out one of the four inputs or outputs if you don't need them. So today we want to look into the input, uh, exactly uh, MIDI input. So what is MIDI? MIDI is a musical instrument digital interface, which was invented quite a long time ago and still running nowadays via different kind of adapters, old MIDI cables, a USB devices but also only on your computer as well and the nice thing is that in the meantime i think about two years ago or something the media organization made the specifications finally public so you can read the full specifications for free and if you go to that site you see this is the official media specification from the media association and there were very different information here so you can read the very original 1.0 specification of media you get also the other extensions like some media files general media and all these things are downloadable here for free and what we want to have a look at is the MIDI reference tables to give you a very basic idea how MIDI works and there is the first one the summary of MIDI messages and you will see you have a number of commands for example like a note of event a note on turn a note on do some modulation on what I play and these things and each of this command has a specific number which you will see many many times if you do some development in that area this looks very cryptic and and if you have such a calculator, like for example, the Windows calculator here on Windows 10 has a very nice feature that you can set it to not only the standard mode, there is also a programmer mode. And if you go to this programmer mode, it helps you to calculate between the binary hexadecimal or decimal uh, writing. And if you see, so for example, let's look at the very famous note on event, it's 1001. So let's go to binary 1001 and then for zeros and you will see this is in hexadecimal 90 and the last four bits are to encode the MIDI channel so we have 16 MIDI channels here written from 0 to 15 and you increase that here in that area and that's why MIDI commands are normally written in hexadecimal because in hexadecimal it's very nice to read because the note on is 90 on MIDI channel 1 and if you go to MIDI channel 2 it's 91 so it's from 90 to 9 f is the full 16 midi channels and you have always the 9 in the beginning so you always see okay it's note on message if you look also at the other ones for example control change is something which you will see very often and let's insert that too so this is 1011 1 2 3 4 so this is a famous b in hexadecimal and also from b o to b f is the range of these numbers. There is also another table which gives you that information straight away. The second one, if you go there, you will get also the full calculations. Here you see the binary, here you see the hex code, and here you see the decimal number. And as you see here is everything written out for you on all channels and you get the idea of those commands. So how can we now receive this MIDI thing in Bitwig? And also Bitwig helps you with that. In the second part, we already created a script with Bitwig and we will do now the same. But now we will say we want to have MIDI input and output. As I told you, you can press the control and return key to get into the commander, say create. And here you see the create new control project, select JavaScript, and we can insert just anything. It doesn't matter. 
because we will just copy some stuff from it. And the important thing is to have here a one and here a one. So we have one MIDI input and one MIDI output. You can also go for only one, one input for, or you can have two inputs or three outputs, whatever. Okay, so let's put that just here on the desktop to create this quickly. And here we are and have the created script and let that open up. And this looks now a little bit different. We see the same as before. We have the API version specification. We have that crash information for deprecation. We have the controller specification. And now there is a new command here, which says host. Again, we see the host variable we have seen before. And it says define MIDI port. So we have one MIDI input port and one MIDI output. And this is something we want to have and put it also here in our already a bit cleaned up script. I can also remove that. So let's put all that stuff together like this. We have now a script with one MIDI input and output and this, let's check it out. It should already appear. And yes, and as you see, here is the script and there is already a input and an output selector automatically created by Bitwig. And what you also notice, it's off now the script. Why is it off? Because you haven't selected any uh, MIDI input and output devices. And this is always the case. If the user needs to select inputs and outputs, it will only turn on if the user did so. Let's go back first and have a look at the script again. What is that thing? Bitwig helps you or helps the user of your extension to configure figure the things. So there is now a function which says add device name base discover repair. There are different variants as well of this function. And there you can give a name of an input and an output port. And if Bitwig finds these ports, it automatically uh, selects them. You can also give multiple variants, O or one or two. So you could also have here a loop which adds several names for identification. And what is also shown here is an example that the naming can be different on the different platforms. So it might have a different name on Windows than it has on Mac or Linux. And so here is already the first code to do so. So here at the name on your Windows platform, here on your Mac, here on your Linux platform. And uh, please always make sure if you release something like this, test it on the different platforms or the users of your script might get confused. We do it for the purpose here, just have one and let's try to make this work. So let's go back to Bitwig and the problem here is I connected the Mox F via a MIDI in put on my Mio interface so it has not a dedicated name. If I would have uh, connected it by USB we would have a name like for example like here with the icon or the complete stuff so it does not make uh, any sense at all but nevertheless the Mox F is connected to number four so if I say MIDI in number four Mio 10 it should work and also MIDI out number four Mio 10. So just for the sake of uh, showing that to you, this is then MIDI in Mio number four Mio 10 and MIDI out out for Mio 10. So let's see if that gave us something. Oh, you see now we get automatic the message Yamaha Mox F controller is now ready to use. So what Bitwig did, it created a new one. So the old one is still there, but we have now a new one which is enabled and Bitwig automatically found that Part. So this is a really nice thing. So if your user simply connects its controller and your script is already there in the right location, it will automatically turn up without the need to do anything. A really nice feature which you should definitely support, but also look into the different namings on the different platforms. There is also a second option which I will not show you here in the tutorial, but you can read it up in the Bitwig documentation of the original programming document which I showed in the first part. There is a variant which shows an example by using a device identifier. There is a specific sysx command which you can send to your device and then you get back a text and you can tell Bitwig what that result should be and if it receives that result it will automatically also like we saw now in this example connect this script to your controller. So this was now the automatic lookup and we have now the connection running 
thing, but we need somehow to get the information now that there is something going on. So let's remove that again to have more space here. So if you scroll down, so you see there are more functions and the important one is that one. Let's just grab that and let's go to init so also that needs to happen in the init function you can only connect to midi functions in the init function and you see we have the host again the magic host and it says get me the first MIDI port and this only works if I have said I want to have one so if we have two for example here I could also say give me here number one but if i didn't do that here up here this will just simply crash and say okay we have only one and not two and then we can set a midi callback what you also should normally do if you have more function calls you should not as the script is generated here twice call the function instead store that into an object so we can say this here is our input port and this input port we use here. Callback means this is a function which gets called when we receive MIDI. And this is here simply called on MIDI. Oh, and this is also somewhere here, which is empty. And we will also copy that here over there. So it seems you need to create a function which has three parameters, which is a status parameter. This is the command together with the, um, with the MIDI channel and with two data bytes. So this is a short MIDI message and a short MIDI message always has three bytes, the status byte with the command and the MIDI channel and two data values, which are different for the different MIDI commands. So what we can simply do is here dump out the MIDI we receive there are actually helper functions to do that. If you would do that yourself, it's also possible, but it needs you need to scratch your head a bit to do that. But Bitwig also helps you with that. It turns out there are already some scripts imported into your JavaScript code, which you don't see. There's no import for them, but nevertheless, they're automatically there. And you can have a look at them. In your program folder, there is a Bitwig installation and there is a resources folder and there is a controllers folder and in the controllers folder where all the scripts which come with Bitwig are located there is one API folder and that one you see four scripts already which gives you a lot of different helper functions. The one we are looking into now is a MIDI helper function and in there you see a lot of different things. For example we have a print MIDI function which prints out the only the information we have received and formats it also as hexadecimal so it's easier to read for us and looking more down there is more stuff so you can always check is that a note on command for example and uh, it goes on like that it gives you also output functions which we will look into the next part of the series but for the time being why not use the print message because if we use that one we don't have to code that ourselves so let's go there put it here and say we want to print out exactly the stuff that's coming into the input port. So let's go back to Bitwig. Let's close it down. We can remove that one. And that one, the new one, should already be reloaded. So there is now a Mox F2, as you see. And let's create some space. And now I press a key on my Mox. And you see, woo, there is stuff coming in. And I see already, so this is hard to read, but here you see the 90 I show you before. So this is a node on. And this is actually not a node off that the mox F sends. Node off normally is number 80 and not 90, but uh, some devices send also a 90, but then send a velocity of zero. That's the second way you can do it. In the node command, you see the number of the node. So this is now number 30, also in hexadecimal. So it's actually actually in number 48 in decimal. And this uh, second parameter is the velocity, how hard you press the key and it was here in 44. We can also try some other stuff. This is pitch bend data and this is modulation the wheel data. And there are some more knobs here on the mocks. 
So that's also a nice way you could store this version of your script and just call it MIDI monitor. And then you have always a nice tool to monitor any new device you want to connect. Simply select a MIDI input, press the keys, turn the knobs, and you will see what these elements are sending. And you can then assign them to the features you want to call up with them. So it turns out this was already a very long part three and I will continue with more MIDI into the fourth part and I'll tell you then write some funky code.